book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 32. And beginning with verse 1. After these things and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come that he pur- and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city, and they did help him. So there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brook that ran through the mist of the land, saying, Why should the king of Assyria come and find much water? In other words, Hezekiah is saying, We're not letting the enemy have our water. The enemy can't have our water. He strengthened himself and built up all the wall that was broken and raised it up to the towers and another wall without and repaired Milo, the city of David, and made darts and shields in abundance. And he set captains of the war over the people and gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city and spake comfortably to them, saying, Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria nor for all the multitude that is with him, for there be more with us than with him. With him is the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. I feel uh, everything's going to be all right in my spirit. Everything's going to be all right. God's got it all in His hands. Everything's going to be all right. When that baby's crying, mother has a way of I feel that in the Holy Ghost. Just be still and know, shh, I'm here. Shh, just settle down. Just relax. Shh, everything's okay. And that's what happened when Hezekiah said, we're not depending on the arm of flesh. God Almighty is going to help us. And it was a, just calm down everybody God is with us oh my you feel what just moved in this building the Lord is with us not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the Lord he is with us everything I'm I'm a nervous wreck just I don't know what's going to happen my son I have cried till I can't cry shh everything is going to be all right. Would you lift your hands and agree with God and His Spirit? There's light beyond. There's light beyond. Your imprisoning circumstance, there's light beyond. Thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in this place. Lord, I thank you for the mighty hand of God. I thank you for your wonderful spirit. You know every situation that is here. I, I need anointing. Lord, we are nothing within ourselves. Take this vessel of clay and anoint it. Take these lips of clay and anoint it with your power and authority. I thank you, Lord, for putting your spirit in earthen vessels. We're just jars of clay that are in need of your mighty power. 
Lift us with your word. Strengthen us with your word. Anoint us with your word. Loose us with your word. Set us free. Let the word minister to us. Comfort us with your word, Almighty God. Your word is powerful and true and holy. Your word is ever living. What a living word. And let your word live among us today. Let it set us free by the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost. And in the name of Jesus, meet every need in this house. In Jesus' name, meet every need. Would you clap your hands now and thank God for what He is about to do. God bless you and you may be seated. It is such an honor to have Lawrence Rhodes with us. Brother Lawrence, so good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Always great to have you home. And I am so thankful today for the blessings of God. Since the very uh, beginning of this year, God began to speak to us. And I am so thankful that we are not defined by our mistakes. Our mistakes do not have to define us. But as the Lord revealed in the first message that he would give to this church after a season of prayer and fasting was a message that we entitled Defining Moments. It was in that message that the life of David, as we preach from Psalm 51, where David could have been forever labeled as a murderer or as an adulterer. Instead, he had a talk with the God of glory. Now, it should have been life for life. It should have been because of adultery. On two accounts, David should have been destroyed. But because... He refused and cried out to the mercy of God. God gave him mercy that he did not deserve. And history would record, and as we move into the New Testament, you can't find traces of David's mistake, only traces of God's mercy. In fact, it was labeled in in the New Testament as the sure mercies of David. David would not be known by his condition, but he would be known rather by the mercy that God had given to him. Can you imagine the guilt and the condemnation that was upon him and what he was facing? But when he went to God, God saw his heart, God gave him forgiveness, he acknowledged his sins, and the Lord totally would rewrite uh, what history would say the most about him. It's not his mistake that we would talk about, but it would be the mercy that came as a result of a divine encounter with Almighty God. And the Lord said that he would give us, especially in this grace of dispensation, that there would be defining moments and redefining moments. In spite of what we've been and where we've gone and what we've done, I am so thankful that there is mercy and help and hope in Jesus Christ. I am thankful that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of every one of those sins. But I I feel in that same vein, and would you believe that I have already preached that message four times in four different places? Defining moments, because I I don't believe it's just uh, a sermon for uh, one time or one place, but I believe it's what God is trying to tell us. This could actually be part two, but it's not part two. Uh, I, I want to preach today that there is life beyond. There is life beyond your yesterday. And it's very important that we understand that it is the devil's business to bring us condemnation and guilt and pain and sorrow. It is the devil's business to cause us to live in our yesterdays as if there is no hope for a tomorrow. Can I tell you that the devil is the accuser of the brethren? 
And he would love for you to be absolutely convinced that you will never be able to outlive your mistake. That your mistake has defined you and that's who you will be for the rest of your life. But I am so glad that the Holy Ghost is not just giving a message, but he is given messages, plural, that you can live beyond your mistake. You can live beyond whatever your situation is. Can I just go ahead and tell you, you can live beyond a broken marriage. You can live beyond divorce. You can live beyond drug addiction. You can have life beyond whatever sin you have committed. I want to go ahead and tell you, there is hope for your situation. God is able to give you life and give you more life, more hope, more peace. There is life beyond your bankruptcy. Some people have said, I'll never make it again. But some people were not really defined until they hit rock bottom. There are 70-year-old ladies that didn't write great stories until they reached 65 and 70 years of age. One was Little House on the Prairie. Because a woman had faith and had belief that if, if, I, if I stop, it's over. But if I'll write one more time, I might write something that that people want to hear. If I'll do something one more time, I I just feel that in the Holy Ghost, you're going to outlive your mistake. You're going to live beyond what the devil said. You're, You're destroyed. It's over. You'll never amount to anything. I wish somebody would start feeling that and know that it is the voice of God. I'm going to help you. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to rebuild you. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to put my life back in you. Get up and dust yourself off. The future is bright and brighter than it's ever been. You're going to sing again. You're going to shout again. You're going to run again. You're going to cry again. But it's going to be tears of joy. You're going to dance again. You're going to have life again. It's not a... Get behind me, Satan. I rebuke every devil in hell that says it's over. It's not over till the king says it's over. It's not over till Jesus said it's over. 2017 is a year of new beginnings. I'm about to get up. I'm about to dust myself off. I'm about to try again. I'm about to dance again. I'm going to pray again. I'm going to get excited again. I'm going to be like a kid in the toy store. I'm going to get excited about Jesus Christ. Ah, David had to go through that. There's no help for him in God. But David, David knew better. My help cometh from Almighty God. My help comes from the Lord. My help, I cannot depend on a horse. I can't depend on a chariot. I can't depend on a sling. He said, it's not my sling that's going to give me that thing. It's not my sling. It is the name of Jehovah God. I'm not dependent on what I I can build. I'm not, I'm not depending on my instrument. I'm depending on my Messiah. He is Lord of all lords and King of all kings. I wish somebody would stop underestimating the power and the authority of your King. He is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, why don't we stand and give him an ovation? Because it's not our horses, it's not our chariots, it's not our machine guns. It's the name that is above every other name. I plead the name of Jesus over Washington. I plead the name of Jesus over North America. I plead the name of Jesus over this United States. I plead the blood of Jesus. My help does not come from man. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. If Jesus don't help us, we're in trouble. If Jesus don't save us, we're in trouble. But I know a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we are able to ask or even think. I feel hope coming. I feel help coming. I feel strength coming. I feel anointing coming. It's going to get better. It's not over yet.
God bless you, and you may be seated. After these things, the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered into Judah. Judah's always been a type of praise. The enemy wants to interrupt your praise. Inter- hey, the, the enemy doesn't want you excited about the future. He wants you living in your yesterday, not in your tomorrow. But Jesus Christ is the same. For what? For what? Not just today, but forever. He's not changing. And can I, can I just remind you, Jesus is God of the Old Testament. Jesus is God of the New Testament. Jesus is the mighty God. Jesus is the everlasting Father. Jesus is everything we need. We have no reason to fear. Nobody should be fearing right now, but we ought to be praising. Can I tell you something? If the devil can't stop the miracle, he will at least try to interrupt the celebration. But I I feel so many sermons running through my head. I might have just got six weeks of Sunday sermons. I just had a revelation of celebration that we need to understand the magnitude. We need to celebrate a, a celebration based on our expectation. We need to understand that God's going to be God no matter what we think. He's going to take care. His church isn't going anywhere. The gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. So you might as well get an expectation of celebration because if you read the book of Revelation, we win. The church is going to win. And if you're connected to Jesus Christ, you win. Devil does not want me preaching today because he wants you fearing your your yesterday. He wants you so bound up in condemnation that you couldn't possibly believe that you could write songs. I'm not worthy to teach Sunday school. I'm not worthy to be a deacon. I'm not worthy to be in church. I'm not worthy to do. Can I tell you not one soul was ever worthy of the blood of Jesus Christ. We wasn't worthy the first time we came with sin in our life. We wasn't worthy the first time we offered us everything. Everything. We brought our nothing our, and he gave us everything. We brought our prostitution and he gave us forgiveness. We brought him alcoholism and he gave us forgiveness. We wasn't good the first time. And we're not that good now. And the devil says, you're not worthy to be touched from God. Say, get behind me, devil. I'm still here. I'm still here. You'll never have access to heaven anymore, but I'm not going with you. He's going to give me all the grace and all the mercy and all the power. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost moving in here. God's going to help you get out. You need to just make your mind up. I'm not dying in my dilemma. Get behind me, spirit of condemnation. I'm going to outlive my mistake. God's going to help me. God's going to lift me. I'm not dying in this dilemma. He's going to forgive me. I'm going to get up and praise him. Not because I'm worthy, but because he is. You know, we, we, we make, we are unapologetically apostolic. Sometimes we run. Sometimes we shout. Sometimes we dance. And we have this twisted ideology in Pentecost that because I sinned, I can't worship. Because I sinned, I can't praise him. Praise is not about you, ladies and gentlemen. Praise is about him. What does your sin have to do with praising him? He's worthy no matter what you've done. He's holy no matter what you've done. Come on, somebody.
somebody. He's worthy. Well, if I feel him, I'll praise him. I don't have to feel him. I just have to know him. And if I know him, I'm going to praise him. Shut your mouth. Don't praise him. You're not good enough to praise him. I wasn't good enough to praise him. I won't be good enough to praise him today. I'm not good enough after a seven-day fast. There's nothing good in us. But he is holy. He is righteous. He is altogether lovely. Some of us are feeling the penetrating pressure of the hand of the devil saying it's over for you. You'll never amount to anything. And when they find out who you really are, you're, you're finished. And Jesus said, I already know who you are and tell the devil he's finished, but you're not. There's life beyond your situation. In me, there's life and more abundant life. If you'll touch my gentle nail-scarred hands, I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to give you help. I'm going to give you strength. Oh, I feel the power of God. God's trying to speak to somebody. Young person being told by, by the devil, you're inches from never being able to walk into the grace of God again. Can you, can you believe that we could get so legalistic in our mindset that we could believe that a young per God is going to give you over to a reprobate mind? I made youthful mistakes and I lived under that torture and torment. You are inches from becoming a reprobate. I, I just want to preach to somebody and preach you out of that condition. There is a hope for you. There is a help for you. The devil is a liar. You need to, don't believe the devil and don't believe yourself. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We wasn't good the first time. We're not that good now. But God is holy. And he is willing to go into covenant with us. And when we need forgiveness, he'll give us forgiveness. When we need his touch, he'll give us his touch. There is life beyond your sinful behavior. In him there is life. And more abundant life. So church, would you help me send the devil packing? Get behind us. I'm not believing your garbage. There's help for us. There's hope for us. There's life for us. And there's life beyond my yesterday. Somebody, I remember years ago evangelizing all over the country, nine years. People would come in and I remember one fella, several people did it, but a lot of people said it. But this man actually looked up. He said, you know, I'm scared to come to church. I said, why are you scared to come to church? He said, man, I'm a sinner. I said, you are? He said, yeah, a bad one. I said, well, what sins have you committed? He said, name one. He said, I'm a sinner. I said, well, don't you realize that sinners is what the church is designed for? He said, man, I'm afraid that when I walk into the foyer, the foundation's going to start shaking. And I'm afraid that the raptors are going to cave in. And I said, it, people worse than you, it hadn't caved in yet. I guarantee you people just like you, and it's still standing because the church was built foundationally for sinners. And the church is still standing 
and I, I just, I, I've got to somehow communicate to you that you are going to make it. Every devil in hell that has told some person, uh, you're not going to get out of this. You're going to die in this dilemma. You're never going to reach the plateau in God that you could, you could think you're going to reach. You're never going to do it. It's over. And that is exactly what the enemy wanted to try to convince God's people. So the leader was faced with a dilemma. If, if I'm not careful, that voice is going to penetrate to our people. And if they believe what he tells them, if Sennacherib's words land, it's going to take away their faith for a future. It's going to take away their hope. But notice, Hezekiah understood. And he got the princes together. He got the leadership together and said, hey, we need to talk. And he took counsel with his princes and with his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city, and they did help him. Now notice... So they were gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brook ran through the midst of the land saying, why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? And I found this is intriguing because he said, the enemy is coming to destroy us. And he said, but I am not about To let the enemy have my water. I am going to protect my water. I'm going to make sure that they are not going to be refreshed by our spring. And then destroy us as a result of our water becoming their nourishment. I felt early this morning that God began to give me a plan. That would give you life beyond whatever you are involved in. Life beyond your present condition. Life beyond your imprisoning circumstance. Life beyond your failure. Life beyond your mistake. He said, first of all, tell my people this morning, guard the water. Don't let the enemy get to the water. His water is everlasting. His waters is living. His water is not stagnant. He said, if you can get to the water and drink of this water, he said, I'm going to give you the water of life freely. He said, don't let the enemy get their water. You make sure that they protect their water supply. That's why we talk in the spirit. That's why we run in the spirit. That's why we sing in the spirit. That's why we believe in talking in tongues. We believe that the water will give us life. The water will give us peace. The water will give us provision. The water will give us oxygen and will give us strength. The devil don't want you. The devil, whenever it was cast out in the ministry of Jesus Christ, the Bible said that the spirits were looking for dry places. The devil has a phobia of the water. They don't like the water. So they look for dry places where they can get in and possess and repossess. But they can't stand water. The devil doesn't like the spirit of almighty God. Wait a minute. There's water flowing there. Wait a minute. There's a river flowing there. Wait a minute. The power of God is there. Come on, church, it's time to get in the river. It's time to get in the water. It's time to remember. It's time to drink of the water. I'm going to get refreshed this morning. I'm going to drink this morning. I'm going to get strong this morning. I'm going to get in the river this morning. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost moving in here, and the water is going to wash my pain away. And the water is going to wash my guilt away. And that's what he said. He said, cast me not away from thy 
holy presence wash me with hyssop that's what that's what David said blot out my transgressions and he said I got to have your water I've got to have water I've got to be refreshed I've got to drink again I've got to know what it is to partake of your spirit again but when you give me life I'll teach transgressors I am a transgressor but I won't be if you'll touch me by your mercy give me the water power of the word the word is so powerful the word is so clear and he said whatever you do let's don't let the enemy get to our water and he strengthened himself and built built up all the wall that was broken and raised up the towers can I tell you that the walls of prayer need to be erected (laughs) You need to raise the wall lest the enemy devour you again. You need to get, be the watchman in the watchtower. That's why we need to rebuild the towers and rebuild the walls. We need the wall of prayer and we need the wall of faith. But then no weapon, the Bible said, formed against you is going to prosper. God's going to take care of his church and he's going to make sure that you are a possessor of the water. Wednesday you can have a drink of the water. Thursday you can have a drink of the water. When you go home tonight and you get a little thirsty and say I didn't get it all at church. You can get in your bedroom and there is a river that flows from the throne room of his majesty. You can say, wash me, cleanse me, saturate me. I'm about to dive in to the water. Cleanse my mind. Cleanse my spirit. Wash my body. Wash my emotions. Make me what I need to be. We need a tower of faith. We need to rebuild our faith. Our faith is not in the things of this world. Our faith is not in an economic system. Our faith is not in Democrats or Republicans. Our faith is in Jesus Christ and him alone. Would you stand and praise him and give him the praise that is due his name? I'm not done yet. Come on, praise him with everything you've got. Oh, I feel help coming. I feel hope coming. I feel revival coming. Everything's going to be all right. You may be seated. Also, he strengthened himself. That would be a command to every leader in this building. Strengthen yourself. And build up all the wall that was broken. He rebuilt a wall of prayer. We rebuilt a wall of faith. Rebuilt a wall of consecration. Rebuilt a wall of separation from the world. And raised up the towers and another wall without. And repaired Milo in the city of David. And made darts and shields in abundance. I like that. He made darts and shields in abundance. And he said, we're going to be ready if he shows up. And it sounds almost like he undoes what he did. He stopped the waters so that now we're guarding the waters because the waters are life to us. And we don't want the enemy to be refreshed by what should refresh us. And we're going to build the walls and going to repair every breach. Because we need walls to keep us in and to keep things out. And we need towers so we can watch. 
Because it's not just pray, it's watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. And he set captains of war over the people and gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city and spake comfortably to them. Now watch. Be strong and courageous and be not afraid nor be dismayed. For the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him, it seems like your problem has you outnumbered. It seems like your bankruptcy has you outnumbered. It seems like your marital conflict has you outnumbered. But he said, there be more with us than with him. And then he makes a statement. After he said, we're going to protect the waters. We're going to rebuild the walls. We're going to rebuild the towers. We're going to gather the people. We're going to strengthen them. We're going to tell them to be strong and be courageous and be ready. But then he says, with him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Because there's, there's total different mindset. We're going to build walls. We're going to protect the water. We're going to watch on the tower. We're going to build as many darts and spears as we can. We're going to do everything we can, but we're not like them. They put their emphasis because they don't have anybody to help them like we have to help us. They depend on the strength of their horse. They depend on the strength of their chariot. They depend, ah, I'm reminded of David as you back up. David, this, see, they got this naturally. It, it, it became handed down because David said, uh, it's not the strength of the horse. It's not the strength of the chariot. It's not the strength of the sling. It's not the strength and certainly not the strength of my arm because it wasn't the name of David that I slung that sling with. I, I, it was the name of the Lord and, and the enemy could not understand. This is not flesh versus flesh. This is not flesh versus flesh. This is not flesh versus flesh. And and the enemy felt, oh, who is this? Who is this kid to come out and defy? Am I a dog that you're sending such, such a little fella? But David already knew, I'm not depending on my flesh to defeat you. I'm depending on Jehovah. And Jehovah's about to take your head off. Jehovah is about to preserve my future. Jehovah's about to give me a future I don't deserve. Can I tell you the size of your giant may seem insurmountable but God's going to help you it's not the arm of flesh it's the mind and the power of almighty God God's going to help you would somebody who's been in the battle of your life would you stand by faith and would you just scream out God's going to help me I mean, you've been a little timid. You've been a little intimidated. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you sinned over the Christmas holidays. Somebody ought to stand up and shout, God's going to help me. I wasn't good the first time, but God's going to help me. I'm not everything I need to be, but God's going to help me. I'm not depending upon my flesh. My flesh is inconsistent. My flesh... Is unpredictable. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His mercy is everlasting. He's still powerful. He's still holy. Somebody's about to be rescued from your prison circumstance. You may be seated. Somebody's about to be set free. The devil said, you won't outlive this one. This one's going to go with you the rest of your life. And when word gets out, you're finished. It's over. I know I'm in the Holy Ghost today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I just need, Brother Bear, 
as a minister of God, I want you, if you'd stand up, every head bowed, every eye closed, but mine and Brother Bear's. If you have been, if the Lord is speaking to you, and you have gone through these agonizing blows of torment, and the devil has told you that your situation is so final that you will never outlive, and there is no life and there is no future beyond your circumstance, and you have come here today feeling the weight of your situation and your condemnation, would you just, while nobody's looking in this room, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Brother Bear, look at, look at all of these hands. The devil has told me and convinced me that my life is over. My ministry is over. I have no future. And I feel the Lord. Put your hand down. Everybody look up. I feel like the Lord since the very beginning of this year is, he is saying, tell my people that if they will repent, I will give them a redefining experience. I will give them mercy they do not deserve. I will hide their sin as far as the east is from the west. I'll, I'll hide it so deep that nobody will be able to ever discover it. That God's going to give you life beyond your mistake. Life beyond God's going to give you a ministry. I'm preaching to somebody that has felt incarcerated. I'll never be the man that I need to be. I'll never be the preacher that God called me to be. I'll never become the individual that God said I, I can be. But today, he's going to give you life beyond your yesterday. He's going to give you the abundance of water. He's going to flood your mind. He's going to wash your spirit. He's going to wash you emotionally. The spirit of God is going to flow. This is the year of healing waters. You may be seated. Sister Clemens, a very godly lady, at the end of our season of fasting. She said the Lord spoke to her two words. This will be the year of healing waters. That healing waters will flow. And then the Lord began to birth in us messages like I'm preaching to you today. That there is life beyond your yesterday. There's a redefining moment that, re- that repentance can give you that can totally change your entire future. He would have been forever labeled by his condition, but he was labeled rather by the compassion that God would show him. Because when he could, he repented and he turned away. Totally redefined by God. A man after God's own heart. And when you enter into the New Testament, you don't find David the adulterer You don't find David the murderer. You hear statements like the sure mercies of David. Because when God does it, he does it right. When God does it, he does it so that nobody, and he offered David life beyond his yesterday. His yesterday could have followed him all the way to the New Testament, but when we go to youth camp... We don't hear sermons about David's mistake. We hear sermons about David's victories. We hear sermons about mercy that was given to David. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God will be merciful to you. God will help us all. Lord, let healing waters flow. I've been addicted for 15 years, some could say. I've been addicted... For 20 years, every time I get weak, I go back to this situation. But 2017, the year of healing waters. He said, it's not the arm of flesh. It's not the words of man. It's not the arm of man. But he said, our God will help us fight our battles And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. If you're here today and you desire a touch of God like you've never had before, 
and you're looking for life beyond your present circumstance or your past, would you just raise your hands right now all over this building? I need God to give me life beyond my present. Hands are all over this building and the Lord will refresh. He will touch you. Would you stand to your feet as I close? Before Christopher Columbus set sail from Spain in 1492 and stumbled upon the Americas, the Spaniards had prided themselves on their misinformed belief that their country was the last westward point of solid land on a flat earth. Early Spanish coins were inscribed with words nay plus ultra, which is a Latin phrase meaning no more beyond. They believed there was nowhere else to go after Spain, and if one ventured into the endless sea, certain danger lie ahead. I've been preaching this morning to many people who have great potential, who have not ventured past their self-imposed limitations, who somehow the devil has convinced you that there's no help for you that the miracles that have been proclaimed for this year are somebody else's, that the miracle for the marriage is somebody else's miracle. Nay plus ultra. There's no more beyond. But we know that after Columbus discovered the Americas, they had to come to this conclusion that they had been wrong for many, many years. They had to come to the embarrassing acknowledgement that indeed there is more beyond. I am preaching to people today that Satan has convinced you there's no more beyond. You'll never get beyond your bankruptcy. You'll never get beyond your brokenness. You'll never get beyond your present circumstance. But there have been some that God has had His life so on you. And He has had His plan so ordered for your life because you are a good man. And you are a good woman. And you have made mistakes. But the steps of a good man are ordered. They are not offered, but they are ordered of the Lord. You didn't expect to be here this morning, but your steps have been ordered. You didn't expect to be in the situation, but now God will give you steps. He will order steps, not offer steps. And if you will take heed to His Word you will find more than you ever dreamed you could have. Everything that you, you thought, I am coming to be there, but today I'm here. And it could be that God just ordered your steps and has realigned you because He's about to take you farther. He's about to take you places in Him that you don't even know exist. He's about to reveal anointing that you didn't even know you could have. He's about to birth a ministry in you that you you don't even feel called. But God's about to give you more than you ever thought. Brother Bear came up to me after church and he said there was a rock somewhere in that area that had an A plus ultra on it. But he said they went back and they scratched out nay. And so now it would read plus ultra. There's more for you. The mercy of God is going to give you everything. Those of you who have been so concerned about your children, I never expected my boy to be an alcoholic. And the devil shouts, there's nothing, no more beyond. He'll die an alcoholic the rest of his life. But I stand as a testimony that when I got in the church, living in an alcoholic environment, going home from church like today, 
I can still see the smoke hanging suspended on the trail. When I walked in, you could see the smoke hanging. I came to church. People would get close. I smelled everything. I smelled like cigarettes, though I didn't smoke. But it was washed in the same machine. Night after night of alcoholism and abuse. And I thought, the devil would tell me sometime, I'm going to kill your mama. Your mama's going to die an alcoholic. And I would take my Bible and I'd say, God, by the authority of your word, deliver my mother. My mother is filled with God's spirit today, freed from alcoholism by the authority and the power of Jesus Christ because there's more beyond. I remember my stepfather saying when he went to detox in Metairie Clinic, I remember him saying they tied two down, detoxing them on each side of me. He said, I don't think I need ropes. I'll quit. Only to see my stepfather come home struggling in his addiction. But one night when the altar appeal was given, he came to the altar and God filled him with water that the church had preserved for people just like him. And when Billy Veal began to drink of living water, he would never need the water and the wine of this world again because he finally found something that could really satisfy. Every head bowed and every eyes closed, Lord, minister to every heart in this building today. There is light beyond. We're going to see our children, our fathers, our mothers rescued by the power of your spirit. That's why we're fasting. That's why we're praying. That's why, because there is more beyond the bottle. There is more beyond their brokenness. There is more beyond their life of sin and confusion. And today, if you're broken, there's hands that have gone up all all over this building. And if you need life and you need God to, to wash you and cleanse you and you are hungry for the Spirit of Almighty God and you're not afraid to let God fill you with His Holy Spirit, I want you to just step out. Would you please just step out as they begin to sing and pray. This altar appeal is broken. Is open for the broken. It's open for them that have been lied to by Satan. It's those that have been fearful of your own personal situation but need God to help you. Just come close to the altar. There's life. You're about to find life. God's going to help you. God's going to strengthen you. I need the preachers to start filing among this crowd. God's going to lift you from the back to the front. I invite you and your family to come. This is the day of Plus Ultra. It's the day that the Lord has made. The water is going to be poured out freely. God's going to wash you. God's going to help you. God's going to prosper and bless you. Oh, yes. Just come to the fountain. Just come to the water and drink of the water of life freely. life beyond my circumstance. I want you to raise your hands and believe that God is going to touch you right now. I'm not staying in this condemned state. Oh, wash me. Cleanse me and sanctify me. Oh, I worship you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. That's it. Cry out to God. Your deliverance is today. He's 
never loved you before. You're going to make it. Shoto Rabahaya He that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The living water is about to flow. That's it, speak in tongues. Let it flow. Life beyond this. There's life beyond this. I'm not going to stay bound. I'm not going to stay bruised. I won't let it back. Oh, he's going to cleanse us. He's going to sanctify and cleanse. With the washing of the water by the word. There's life beyond. Oh, you're going to make it, sir. Don't give in. You're going to make it, ma'am. Don't quit. You're not going to die in your addiction. You're not going to die in your dilemma. There's life beyond. You're going to find him in a way you've never discovered. You're going to find peace like you never knew it. Power like you never knew it. Oh, yes, he's freeing us. Let it flow. He's washing us. He's cleansing us. with them. Put your arms around them and encourage them like Hezekiah. We're not dependent on flesh. God's going to help you. We're not dependent on the arm of flesh. God's going to help you. God's going to strengthen you. We'll use every means. We'll use every tool. We'll make arrows. We'll make shields. We'll go to any class. But our dependence is upon us. You, oh God, you help us. You wash us. And favor. Yes, Lord. Cleanse me. Wash me. Now, praise it. 
you, Jesus, for helping us. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us. You're not getting our water.